Well, hello, hello. I seem to have got myself into a mess here with servo drives. I'm going to attempt to put servos on my printer. Not the best idea, but we're going to try it and see. Uh, if it doesn't work out, we can always uh, use these servos for a CNC project that I'm working on uh, for an automated mill and lathe. So, I'm going to try these anyway and see uh, how well they work. So these are the uh, Stepper Online A6 100 watt servos. And I've got two of them here mounted uh, back to back and, and basically I, I mark them here so that when I run them I can see you know, how good they, they hold their steps. And this is the drive itself. Uh, it's about the size of a filament box but it's, uh, it's much narrower. Um, so anyway, um, so I've decided to, so I have a machine that's already up and running that I want to put these on. And before getting these servos, I was in the process of moving my stepper motors outside the chamber, uh, so that I can have them in a cooler environment. Um, and also I wanted to belt them. And I was hoping that by belting the stepper motor, that it would kind of dampen some of that oscillation you get when the rotor stops at each step. Every time a stepper motor uh, completes its its movement of a pulse or micro step or whatever, it, it kind of um, uh, bobs about from the magnetic position. It'll it'll bob slightly um, above and below the peak holding torque point. It'll sit there and and it'll it'll kind of do this and stop every time. And I kind of felt that uh, steppers inherently create this VFA. And so I wanted to put servos on it to see if that would mitigate that. However, using a servo, because you don't have planned motion, you're going to send pulses in the same way, and the drive's going to respond. But the drive doesn't really have an end target. All it sees is a pulse, go, pulse, go. No pulse, stop. So that's going to cause an overshoot, whereas a stepper motor is not really going to be able to overshoot. If it does overshoot a step, it's actually skipped a step. So steppers are good in that they're not going to overshoot, and servos are going to overshoot if you don't have any motion planning. So you probably would have to set the gains up really high on the servo drive in order to, to mitigate uh, that overshoot, but it's going to happen uh, in in pulse direction mode it's just, it's just gonna happen so it's really not a great idea um, but like I said I I want to try it and uh, and see and then uh, who knows maybe here in the next year or so uh, someone will port ethercat and we'll be able to natively we'll be able to communicate with um, servos using ethercat and there won't be no need for these all these IO boards here that I'll, I'll explain here in just a minute so Anyway, uh, instead of using a printer board, I am going to use this development board. And this is an H723 uh, development board. Uh, it's one of the most powerful that you can get in a small microcontroller like this. Uh, my initial was going to use a Pico 2. And this is a nice package. I mean, this is a nice package size, this Pico 2. But I don't have enough I.O. or input-output or pins available to be able to communicate back and forth to the drives. So this guy is pretty much out. This guy runs at 150 megahertz. Um, and the H723 is at, uh, what? 500 megahertz, five something. It can only run at a max, I think, of 400 megahertz. So, um, so this is uh, going to be just as fast as an Octopus Pro uh, board, and it has two rows of pins on this side and two rows of pins on the other side. Um, so you get 60 pins here on this one side, and another 60 on the other side. Now a few of these pins are for 3 volts, 5 volts, USB, so some of these pins are used, which is okay. 
Currently, I'm using all the pins on this row that have to do with uh, GPIO or PWM or, or what have you. I've got every one of these addressed, and then I have a few addressed on the other side. So since I only have a few on the other side, I might just put some pins in the other side and uh, and use it that way or I might get another one of these uh, breakout boards now what is pretty nifty is these pin these terminal numbers here represent the pin numbers here so when you wire this and it shows PE 9 or whatever is on pin 14 and pin 14 is where you have to go so it's very straightforward here and the dev board I have taken so instead of uh, soldering this piece to there I put one of these on there double row uh, 3030 okay and so I've got this soldered on the bottom side and I've got another one on this side so like I said, if I want to, I can get another one of these, and it'll just plug right into the back side, just like this one, but it'll just be double the size. It's going to be ginormous. Um, anyway, so so anyway, I thought that worked out really well. This is in there very rigid, okay? So I'm pretty happy with this arrangement right here. So, um, so now, also, I'm outputting 3.3 volts. These are really not... They might be 5 volt tolerant. I don't think they are actually. These are 3.3 volt tolerant here. And so I've got an optical isolated uh, I.O. board here. So this takes in 3.3 volts and then outputs it whatever I have on VCC up to 24 volts. And just for this setup, I'm using uh, this to output my home initiate to the Z pulse and also my drive enable and I've got those running to a relay board I won't be using a relay board for IO uh, related to drive input signals or output signals I won't use relays I will possibly use these relays to drive a contactor um, for emergency stop so that I can cut the main power to the drives uh, these drives are 220 volts and um, the proper insulation method is to use a contactor in front of the drive and to tie that into e-stop so I'll be doing that more than likely with one of these and there are four of these for the four drives for four contactors um, I may use one contactor um, and feed all four drives with that and then I'll only have to use one relay and it'll just kill them all uh, in case there is a problem so um, so this is an input to output uh, input at 3.3 and output of uh, 3 I think it's 1.8 volts up to 24 volts on this particular board and then I have another board here that is a output board and this takes 24 and brings it all the way down to 3.3 volts on this side so I can directly attach my I.O. from my H723 directly to the output here. It's optically isolated. There's not going to be a problem between those two electrically to cause any kind of problem. Um, and then, so just kind of a rundown here of how this works. Um, sorry about that. Is... Um, for my test setup, I'm outputting the pulses on this green wire here, and this is open collector output. Okay, so I'm a single wire is my pulse signal, and the next one is my direction. And then for the second drive, this is my pulse, and this is my direction. So on a regular stepper, if you were to use a, a 3D printer board, you would use the direction, the step. And the enable right off the stepper port I think the first pin on the left is direction the second one up is step and then the very top one on the left hand side is enable so uh, and then these signals here of pulse and direction are running to a this in particular is a wave share isolated 
uh, TTL to RS-485 line driver. So I'm taking this open collector output here to the RX of this um, line driver and then it's going to output a differential signal on these two wires directly to the drive. This will give me up to oh, 2 million uh, 2 million bit output. This is really fast. If you were to use open collector, I think you'd max this 200, 200, uh, 200 kilo. So, yeah, you don't want to use that because open collector is kind of noisy. So this is going to clean those signals up and they're going to look like nice square waves here. So this is my step. This is my direction. And then I've got these hooked to a little terminal block here and to the two wires for pulse and direction to the drive. Um, now for this demonstration, I'm using this relay board to give me my enable and to also give me a homing operation. Now I will use the regular home switches on my printer and Clipper will home to those switches. But once that cycle is complete, I will send um, an input to the drive to tell it to home to the Z marker. And I can give you an example of what that does right here. So um, I'm going to just move this anywhere. And what I'll do is I will enable the drive. Okay, so right now the drive is enabled. This little this little light here turned on. And now we're enabled. This this rotor here is locked. It's in closed loop right now. It can't it can't move. Um and so what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and initiate a home to the Z marker. Here it goes. Okay, I can do it over and over again. Let me go ahead and line this guy right up with it. It's going to home exactly to this spot every single time. Okay, and so I've got that output. I'll show you the output here when I trigger it. It literally comes on for one second and then shuts off. The drive only wants to see that uh, that trigger momentarily. And I haven't tried to see if I leave it on what it will do. I imagine the drive will ignore it uh, until it changes states again and then it'll be active again. And of course you don't want that, you don't want to be printing and then all of a, ha all of a sudden have a home initiate come on and then cause your printer to start homing in the middle of a print. So there's also another input for the drive to inhibit the home operation. Um, so I will tie together through this I.O., you know, basically drive ready, the fault condition of the drive, um, the homing operation, and, and by the way, I can home to this Z marker here, and then I can offset that any amount that I want to after it hits that Z marker. So having to adjust those home switches in a very fine, precise manner is not going to be necessary. Um, so sometimes when you mount your end stop switches and you have to adjust them, it can be very finicky to get a very fine position unless you really design your mechanical uh, end stop such that when you loosen the screws to move it, it doesn't twist or tilt, you know, or move away from, you know, the point, the, the point of contact of the uh, arm of the switch so it can be a real pain to adjust uh, end stop switches to get perfect racking of your of your gantry okay so um, so yeah so that's what I got here it's very straightforward here on setting this up It's very easy it's just like a Pico 2 except the addresses are different just like an octopus flashing the card was simple um, it's just like you know anything else um, so so anyway so yeah I got a uh, relay board here I got optocoupler boards for I to or for I to O and O to I and I'll have communication between the drives 
uh, by wire anyway instead of software. It would be nice to have you know software communication to talk back and forth through EtherCAD or Modbus or whatever, but uh, we don't have that with Clipper. So, um, and so I, I'm using a, a 3B, a 5 volt power supply. Uh, I'm trying really not to use much of any 3.3 volt here because there's a limitation on how much current you can use from this board and I don't remember what the total is but it's on the Pico 2 I think it's like 50 milliamps um, so uh, but through these these opto isolators here you're not drawing but not drawing much current on these channels at all so that's this is really a good you know you don't want to run these to relays and, and I hate to use relays uh, do basically the inductive kick uh, when that coil shuts off it it uh, it induces uh, current into that line and and you can uh, you can blow your inputs real easy if you don't have at least a a uh, flyback diode on here so these come with them they're they're right there every one of these relays has them built in um, but again I, I don't really like to use mechanical relays too much um, but sometimes, sometimes you might have to use them. So, and uh, so anyway, yeah. And uh, you know, I can I can command this guy to run at uh, at three thousand. And it goes for like ten thousand millimeter, and then comes back. So, and that, she stopped already. So, yeah, it's, and it's tight. This thing is tight. So, yeah, I'm kind of laying this out to get an idea of the arrangement. Make sure everything works. So, I got me a test stand here. I just didn't go for the full Monty right away and install it. I wanted to kind of see what's happening. And that's good because initially I was going to use this and then it just didn't start to work out. So, and I had a little fun here playing around, and I sure, I, I sure created some of my own problems along the way. But so far, so good here. No blown up parts, and everything seems to be working rather well, actually. So anyway, we'll see uh, soon, maybe a month. We can test this out and and see what happens. That's what I got. All I can say is, just do it.